the bulk compositions of carbonaceous chondrites have very characteristic element patterns, and this is shown in these two plots here. Both plots share the same x-axis on which the elements are plotted, so these are both category plots. In the lower plot, on the y-axis is the 50% condensation temperature. And then we can see that to the right there's an increase of volatility. Also shown are the cosmochemical groups into which the various elements are categorized. So for example, up to here are the refractory elements, then up to here are the main elements, then the volatile elements, and then here these are the highly volatile elements. Now these are also called here the plateau elements, and I'll come back to this in a minute. In the upper plot, there is the element concentrations in the various chondrites, normalized to Ci and to magnesium. And here the um, concentration in weight percent is used, but because it's normalized, this should be a mass ratio actually, then this would be the correct designation. The scale is linear on the y-axis. And we first look at the lower plot here. And what we can see that there is a general decrease, monotonic decrease, in the 50% condensation temperatures. And we then look at the various cosmochemical groups. Then we see that for the refractory elements, most of the refractory elements have about the same 50% Temperature, uh, condensation temperatures. The same is true for the main elements. They are also about, um, they also have about the same condensation temperatures. There's a slight decrease. Then for the volatile elements, there is a rather steep decrease in the 50% condensation temperatures. And importantly, this is a monotonic smooth decrease, so there's nothing like a step or something in between. Now let's go to the element concentrations, the normalized element concentrations in the various chondrites, which are the CM, CO, CV, CR, and CA, CK chondrites. Then when we look at the refractory elements, the, um, they have all about the same concentrations, not among the various chondrite groups, but within a single chondrite group. If you look at the CM chondrites down here, the refractory elements have all about similar concentrations. So there's no visible fractionation. It's not about the details, there's quite some wiggle in the C, um, CK and the CVs, but we're not looking at this, we could look at the overall patterns here. And the same is true for the main elements, they have a little bit lower concentration, but among the individual elements they, they are about the same. And then starting with the volatile elements, there's also a decrease in the volatile element abundances. And finally, when we come to the highly volatile elements, we suddenly observe that there is no longer a decrease, but they have all about the same concentrations. And this is why we also call them plateau volatile elements. Now this volatile element depletion, as it is called, so this general trend downwards here, this volatile element decretion is usually explained by some kind of incomplete condensation or maybe incomplete evaporation. I'd like to quickly illustrate this a little bit. So if this is the, the plot here, the normalization to magnesium and CI, and then CI would be of course at 1, because if this concentration is normalized to itself, it is always 1. And then there might be one pattern of CM chondrites, for example, that, that then looks something like this, and then here's the volatile element depletion. Now this kind of depletion, as said, might be due to some incomplete condensation. So if there's a gas reservoir in the protoplanetary disk, not all of the elements, the volatile elements in particular, condense because maybe there's a certain temperature of a couple of hundred kelvins. Then these elements remain in the gas and the solids are depleted in these. Or the other way around, there's a solid has all the volatiles, gets heated, and then the volatile elements um, evaporate. But what we would expect from this volatile depletion is such a pattern that continuously and monotonically goes down to close to zero, something like zero. But this is not what we observe. What we observe is in fact something like this, this kind of kink here. And then these are the plateau volatile elements. 
So how do we explain this? Now, um, the, the other chondrite that has this flat pattern is to normalize CI chondrites here. Yeah? So the suggestion is there was that the volatiles got depleted down to almost zero, and then there was the addition of CI-like material that added volatile elements to the chondrites in various um, abundances and brought up the pattern to this elevated concentration here, and this would then explain this plateau. So if we um, go back here to, to this initial, initial plot, what we, what we now have is a sort of two-step process. Initially, there was a volatile element depletion, an incomplete volatile element depletion, or incomplete condensation of elements. So this is the first step, element incomplete, element evaporation or condensation. And then there's a second step, and this would then be the addition of CI-like material that increased the volatile elements to these plateaus. So basically, these volatile elements, um, well, th this would be expected that there's this depletion which didn't happen, and then the addition of CI material produces plateau. So looking at the bulk composition of chondrites is very useful to learn something about the protoplanetary disk and the processes in there. In this case, this would be initially incomplete evaporation or condensation, and then in the second step, the addition of material. And this is what we can learn on the bulk element patterns.